Hi, this short video is to demonstrate the use of the Master Beam Steel Beam Designer and takes you through most of the options from starting the program. So Designer Suite and into Steel Beam Designer. Um, we first of all choose where we want to save the file and I'm going to save it into my directory and give it a file name. demo 101 and create new so I'm creating a brand new file and I start with the default and I can use my mouse to roll in and out to zoom in and out on the frame but what I'd like to do is to configure my screen so I'm just going to go and say draw four diagrams side by side and I'm just going to move those a wee bit further apart that's better and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the columns. So if I go to supports and I tell it there's no upper columns and then I tell it there's no lower columns putting in a value of zero. That gives us fixed end moments and all I do now is tell it that the fixity is pinned. Now it's not normal to be doing three span beams so if we come back to beam data and I'm just going to get rid of the other two spans and I'm also going to change my default so I'm going to change my default to be grade 355 and I'm going to choose my default beam to be a 406 140 by 39 and just say close. The default span I'll leave that at 6 and I'll just put in the default dead as 10 and live as 10 kilonewtons. At the minute it's working to 5950. If I come up and say design code, euro code, UK national on X, and I get the new values, include self weight and include serviceability live only. At this stage, I can go and I can say use this as my default for every new beam. So every time I create a brand new beam, I don't have to go through this process. So I've got my beam. I'm going to say that the actual span I'm working with here is 2.8. I have a dead load of 18 kilonewton of masonry and a live load of 2.5 times three. So let's call this, um, 7.5 kilonewtons per meter run. Uh, leave the spacing at 1 so we don't magnify these loads up. Coming into supports, <coughs> it's a single span and I don't need to worry about the steel section for the column because I'm not doing anything there. Um, point loads, I'm going to go to span 1 and I'm going to put a cross beam coming in with a load again of 18 kilonewtons um, at one meter in. So there's my little point load coming in. I'm not going to put any distributed loads and as you can see there per meter run and I'm not going to put any varying loads. I'm just going to keep this nice and simple. And that is all there is to setting up my first beam. Now in my case what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in to this beam a 1.2 meter second span and I'm going to suddenly come along and in supports tell it that the second span is a cantilever so there we go with a cantilever coming back to here I will also tell it so we get the higher sagging moments that we want to use alternate loads and we can see that additional coming in there and we're getting our alternate load patterns in and again, that's all we need to do. If we want to keep the same loading on both, uh, we don't change it. But if we want to make a lighter load on the cantilever, I'm going to drop that down to 12 and 5. So a lower loading on the cantilever. And we'll see here, when we magnify this up, that in fact, the cantilever is rising due to the the pre-existing curvature of this continuous member. Now also because this is a cantilever we will insist on it being 
a one section size for all members so both members will use the one section size. I just go into my design and steel design very simply it automatically sets up my first member and I just go to beam and beam portion and I'll say yes it is fully restrained and then I'll move to my second and I will say that it is not it's unrestrained uh, just to play it safe so I'll go for unrestrained 1.5L being a cantilever and it is set to cantilever it's detected as a cantilever always worth checking that that member set as cantilever obviously the inner beam is non cantilever it understands that due to the nature of the beast with the everything so just looking at my design at the minute it is working well inside its capacity I can just drop this right down to a 127 and it fails as you would expect and I can just walk up slowly one section at a time till it works or if I was in a far bigger span I could use the auto size to move up to the first section it finds that works we also have the option to sort not by size but by weight so that we're actually always going up in weight so that all the 25s, the 28s, the 30s, the 33s, 40s in weight order. In this case for my short span that's not that significant because the bottom three or four are always um, in weight order anyway. Now looking at my cantilever I will see that the one seven eight by one oh two also works but to be honest 102 I'm never a fan of 102s and for that tiny extra weight I'm going to go for a 203133 to get a far wider more robust section that's got a nice wide flange and that's all we need to do now coming back we can go and we can go to print and we can print our graphics just before we do that just descale this a wee bit so it's down a wee bit and I'm going to go say print and I'm going to say print graphics and I'm going to print it to a PDF using the inbuilt PDF writer and A4 and off I go so I've now got one page sitting in the, the tray I then go into my we go to print brief and we select print current brief and it's going to again print it all out and it's printed out four pages we'll see what it's given us in a minute and the idea is that it's going to give us our diagrams and it's going to print out our maximum values our forces our reactions plus our design check so it's given us all those in for our analysis we go back into design steel design and then we go and since we don't need to do anything we can just go print print design output and we can select we don't need the appendix G checks because we're just doing the simplified checks and we can just go print so printers on and print and off it goes sends it to the printer and we now have six pages and if I just go and say close session it's going to ask me where to save it and it's going to be in Tommy's demo files and I'm going to say save and here we go here's my results so my little diagrams and then my actual printing of all the information the properties the basic results and then our one two design check so we didn't actually need to print the diagram initially on its own because we got that as part of the default printout so just closing this when we went here to print it actually gave me all the output I needed so that's how simple it is to do your first steel beam design.